हो गया है देखना तू अभी हुआ मॉर्निंग चिल्ड्रेन गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन सो टूडेज क्लास विल बी स्टार्टिंग विद न्यू चैप्टर ओके थर्ड चैप्टर ऑफ अर कंपाउंड विच इज नाइट्रिक एसिड ओके uh so i want everyone to open page number 183 in your textbook so that we start marking what you have to study from this chapter page number 183 okay okay so uh this chapter nitric acid is the smallest chapter of all the compounds uh you will be studying we have got one more that is sulfuric acid that is the last one nitric acid is the smallest you can uh, look at the scope of syllabus you will get an idea about how small the chapter is you are actually studying only three topics from this chapter the first one is laboratory preparation of nitric acid the second one is uh manufactured by oswald's process and in that too like you are studying only the equations and you are studying the chemical property of nitric acid which will be uh, like four equations one reaction with carbon one reaction with sulfur and two reactions with copper metal that is with uh, dilute hno3 and conk hno3 right so it's a very uh, small chapter okay so on page number 183 <laughs> on page number 183 uh there are two terms at the end of the page that is like uh, nitric acid the salts in minerals that is chili salt petre and bengal salt petre you will study those terms and you need to know the formula of those two things uh because uh, in balancing chemical equations or like you know in your reactions they will ask you what is the reaction of like you know bengal salt petre with conk h2so4 or what do you observe okay so that kind of terms it will come so instead of asking you like you know direct question like what happens when kno3 reacts with conk h2so4 they will ask you this type of question so you need to know the terms right so that's all page number uh, 183 on page number 184 we have uh, uh, the laboratory preparation of nitric acid so laboratory preparation of nitric acid uh, you will have to remember the diagram then the reactions there are two reactions exactly like hcl for hydrogen chloride and then you will uh, like you know go through all the terms which are given there below that is what are the reactants what are the products all those stuff. okay all the things which are given over there right then on page number 185 they have an explanation for whatever things we have taken for this so page number 185 is also very important and on page number 186 uh point number 4 is important and uh, manufacture of nitric acid by oswald's process on the pa- on the page that is page number 187 you don't have to study the diagram on page number 186 for oswald's process right uh, on page number 187 we have got uh, the equations so in this uh, all the equations we have got three equations uh, because it happens in three steps so three equations and all the factors which are like you know important for that equations will be studied properly so factors are there only for the first and the second step third step does not have any factor okay so you will study that properly 
then uh, 188 189 and all you can like you know read through it do not cancel it read through it okay then on page number 190 page number 190 uh, under properties of nitric acid uh, you will study uh, point number one that is the bigger one that is below all those like you know physical properties well i think that is nitric acid affects the skin if it accidentally falls on it uh, so in that you will mark uh, the second uh, sub point which you have that is the second bullet point you have that is it combines with the protein of the skin forming a yellow xanthoprotic acid and hence stains the skin yellow it might come as a give reason question like why does nitric acid affect the skin so this is the answer for it that is nitric acid falls on the skin and it like you know forms a acid like you know a compound that is anthoprotic acid so that is actually the substance which gives that yellow color and below that uh, the same type of questions which we studied for uh, hcl that is why distillation of boiling cannot be used to concentrate again you'll be studying the cbm of nitric acid that is 121 degrees celsius that is the temperature so the temperature for HCl was uh, 109.8 degrees Celsius. The temperature for uh, HNO3 is 121 degrees Celsius. You'll study that. Then go to page number 192, where we have chemical properties of nitric acid. Under that, you will mark uh, the first and the second reaction under oxidation of non-metals. Concentrated nitric acid liberates nitrogen dioxide. You can see reaction of carbon with nitric acid and sulfur with nitric acid. Those two reactions. Then on the right-hand side, page number 193, we have uh, nitric acid oxidizing nature. That is the reaction with metals. So under the first one, that is, uh, you will take copper plus dilute nitric acid. And under the third one, uh, you will take copper plus uh, concentrated nitric acid. So you have got both the things. Okay, so first reaction under both the tables. Okay, that is both the reaction with copper. You will mark that. Okay, passivity, aqua region, all are not, are not mentioned in your scope of syllabus. Similarly, whatever happens in the next page is also not mentioned in your scope of syllabus. And then we have page number 195. Brown ring test. Now, brown ring test is not there in your scope of syllabus, but I want you to study brown ring test because we will be studying brown ring test in uh, practical chemistry. Okay, so we need that because uh, brown ring test is the confirmatory test for uh, nitrate ions. Okay, so brown ring test may what you have to study is you have to just know how this happens. Okay, so there is like nothing to buy hard over there. You just have to know how do we do this test. Just say, for example, how do I find out uh, like, you know, if it is a sulfate ion or chloride ion, like I add a AgNO3 solution, so I'll get a white PPT. That kind of a question will come. So at that time, they will ask you how to identify a nitrate ion. So you can use this brown ring test. At that time, you have to like, you know, know what is the steps which is involved over here. Okay, so... Uh, uh, the point number three on page number 195 that is test for detection of like you know nitrate ion uh, the procedure is given to you so you will read through the procedure you can write the answers in your own words okay so that's all you will do for brown ring test and on the next page again like in you know, its uses and all you can read through it okay so basically you are studying like mainly three things in this chapter laboratory preparation uh, manufacture and chemical properties okay so let's go to the first topic that is laboratory preparation of nitric acid Okay, so uh, important terms to remember in nitric acid, as I told you from the first page, Shelly Solpetri, that is sodium nitrate, NaNO3, and Bengal Solpetri, that is potassium nitrate, which is KNO3. And the reason why I'm telling you this is important because they will give these terms, and we have 95% chances that you will, like, you know, uh, swap it when you're writing the formula for this because we have seen uh, uh, all these batches like you know studying this so unless and un until you like you know take it seriously and understand what has been written so you have to be very careful when you're taking these terms so chili salt petri is NaNO3 and Bengal salt petri is KNO3 
So you can remember it this way, like you know, West Bengal capital is Kolkata, then K for Kolkata, and potassium is also K. You can remember in that way. Okay, use any of your techniques which you can to remember these terms. Okay, so that is the uh, first part. Now, the first topic of the chapter, which is laboratory preparation of nitric acid. Now, in laboratory preparation of nitric acid, we are using a mixture of KNO3 or NaNO3 with concentrated sulfuric acid. This is the setup for the experiment. Okay, if you can uh, identify, this is the diagram which we have in our grade 9 and grade 10 chemistry textbook. Okay, the one on the cover is the preparation of nitric acid. Okay, so this is actually a very simple reaction. If you remember the laboratory preparation of hydrogen chloride, this is exactly the same type of reaction if you can see. Okay, so this reaction is between potassium nitrate and concentrated sulfuric acid to give you potassium bisulfate and nitric acid. This reaction takes place under 200 degrees Celsius. I have not mentioned the de degree that is a temperature over there, but then this reaction should be taking place below 200 degrees Celsius, right? Uh, you can also swap this KNO3 with NaNO3, that is sodium nitrate. So sodium nitrate will react with H2SO4 and will give you sodium bisulfate, that is NaHSO4 plus HNO3. Now, if you remember the laboratory preparation of HCl, you can easily identify that in HCl, it was KCl which was used here instead of KNO3 and you got HCl instead of HNO3. So that's the only change which is like, you know, visible over here. That is KNO3 came instead of KCl. So instead of HCl, we got HNO3. So if I have taken like NaCl over here, it would have been HCl. So I'll take NaNO3, I'll be getting HNO3. So it is basically... Uh, the property of concentrated sulfuric acid, which is being used over here, concentrated sulfuric acid being a non-volatile acid, is used to uh, remove the acid which is present in a salt. And that salt will be having the ion of a volatile acid. So you can see the salt is potassium nitrate. The salt is prepared by taking KOH and HNO3, that is potassium chloride and nitric acid. So when I add a non-volatile acid to it, it will displace the volatile acid ion from the salt. That is why NO3 is getting displaced and HNO3 is formed. Okay. So again, swap this reaction as I told you, uh, that is KNO3 can be swapped with NaNO3 and the product will be NHSO4 and HNO3. Right. Now, the setup. So again, like you won't be asked to draw anything in the exam, but you need to identify everything properly. So over here, we have got this flask. The difference between preparation of uh, NH3 and HCl and HNO3 is that we don't have a drying agent in this process. As you can see, the, the apparatus in which the reaction is happening, the vapors are directly going into another collector. There is no other uh, like, you know, flask or any other apparatus in between to hold any uh, drying agent. Okay, so that is the major uh, difference you can identify in this process. So we have a flask. Uh, this flask is called as a retort flask. Retort flasks are those which are used to like, you know, heat at very high temperature. Okay, so retort flask has a, uh, this retort flask has a very long uh, snout kind of a thing, which is being extended and it has been uh, put inside a round bottom flask, the normal one, like, you know, which we had used for the preparation of HCl and NS3. And uh, this round bottom flask over here is called as a receiving flask. It is called as a receiving flask because we are receiving our product in that flask. Okay, so this is called as a receiving flask over here. Then we have a burner and uh, we have a trough which contains uh, water. And then we have a tap again from which cold water comes. Okay, so here basically what we are doing is we are uh, heating this particular thing. Vapors of HNO3 are formed due to the reaction between NaNO3 and sulfuric acid or KNO3 and sulfuric acid. HNO3 vapors are formed over here. It travels through this and it reaches this particular receiving flask. The receiving flask, as you can see, it is like closed with the help of a cork. Okay. So here this cork should be made up of glass. Okay. It does look like a, like, you know, rubber cork, but then rubber cork cannot be used because uh, HO3 vapors are very corrosive. So you cannot use anything with rubber or plastic or anything. Okay. So it should be uh, glass only. So 
this HNO3 vapor start collecting over here. So we have water in this trough and we uh, switch on this water from this tap. So this cold water flows over this uh, collecting flask or the receiver flask. And because of that temperature difference, vapors of nitric acid, they start condensing and they change into a liquid state and it is collected in the receiving flask. Okay, so this is how we collect nitric acid in the laboratory method of like you know laboratory method of uh, nitric acid that is preparation of nitric acid in the laboratory very simple setup only two apparatus used over here that is a retort flask and a round bottom flask retort flask is where the reaction is taking place that is uh, we are having this uh, kno3 or nno3 reacting with concentrated sulfuric acid and we have a receiving flask which is a round bottom flask which is used to collect the hno3 vapors hno3 vapors are condensed by the addition of cold water on top of the receiving flask wherein the vapors of HNO3 condense to give you liquid HNO3. Okay, this is all which happens in laboratory preparation of nitric acid. Okay, and uh, the temperature should be uh, mentioned properly. The temperature is uh, less than 200 degrees Celsius, just exactly like how we used to write it for HCl, that is hydrogen chloride. Okay, yeah, somebody raised one. Any doubt, yeah, Kashish, you raised your hand, Kashish. Sorry. Sir, I did not understand why are we adding cold water on top of We have vapors of HNO3 coming, right? We yeah. are vapors of HNO3 coming. So this vapor of HNO3 is being changed into liquid HNO3 by condensing it. That's the point of adding water. We are not dissolving HNO3 vapors just like how we had done it for uh, hydrogen chloride yeah. gas or NH3 gas, wherein like you know we had used the like you know method of dissolution. That was different because we had studied in both the chapters that HCl and NH3 they are highly soluble in water, so HNO3 does not have that kind of a property. So that's the reason why we are not using any water or anything to dissolve it. That's the reason why we are directly condensing this particular thing into its liquid state. Okay. Okay, sir, thank you. You're welcome. Yes, Anup? Uh, sir, I didn't know processes for the purification of the nitric acid. Sorry, what? I didn't get you. Uh, is the nitric acid not purified? Like, we're just directly collecting it. Purification can be done. That is like, uh, as I told you, we use that method of uh, concentrating the nitric acid. There is nothing to purify. If you remember, we had not done any purification for any of the gases till now. That is HCl or HNH3. Mm -hmm. We had never done any purification thing. Uh, so there is no purification actually happening. But then, yeah, concentrating uh, methods are there. So that will be done. Like, you know, because in this case, if at all the nitric acid form does dilute, we can make it concentrated. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, Riyas. Uh, so why can't we use temperatures above 200 degrees Celsius. This is the same answer for uh, the reaction with HCl. In HCl also we studied that above 200 degrees Celsius the glass apparatus will be like you know developing cracks and fuel is wasted and the most important point is uh, Na2SO4 or K2SO4 is a salt form when we are doing this particular reaction. So in this one in this reaction as you can see on the screen KHSO4 is the product which is formed over here but if I'm heating it above 200 instead of KHSO4 I'll be like you know getting K2SO4 or Na2SO4 if I'm using sodium nitrate. So those salts when formed, they stick to the bottom of the flask that is over here. So they stick it over here and it like, you know, it's very difficult for that particular thing to be removed. So to avoid all those kind of things, we don't heat it above 200. But the most important thing is like, you know, uh, points like fuel is wasted and uh, the glass apparatus developing cracks that is more important. And in this case, we have, we had three points in HCl. If you remember, you had studied HCl, we had three points, but then here the point is different here. One more point is there. That is, uh, in this case, we have got nitric acid, which is being like, you know, formed as a product. Nitric acid, when you heat it for long, it will be like, you know, undergoing decomposition. So to prevent that decomposition of nitric acid, we don't heat it about 200 degrees Celsius. Okay. So I'll be explaining that when we are going into it. Okay. Okay. Okay, so that was the setup for uh, laboratory preparation of nitric acid, right? Now, uh, we will go into detail about like same how we did it for NH3, HCl and all like everything in detail. So the first point that is the preferred acid. So we have got three uh, like acids which are very important which we are studying also this year that is HCl, HNO3 and H2SO4, right? 
so when i'm preparing a particular asset uh, the point will be like basically like uh, why can't i use the other two assets for the same preparation method so if you remember hcl also we had used hno h2so4 uh, as a reactant instead of hno3 now here we are preparing nitric acid and again we are using concentrated sulfuric acid not hydro uh, like hydrochloric acid in this process okay and the reason for both those things is the same what we studied in the previous chapter the same reason applies over here that is H2SO4 is a non volatile acid okay so i had explained what is volatility and all so volatile acids are the ones which get into its vapor state very easily so that is like hcl and hno3 if i am using as a reactant and i am heating it to a temperature of 200 degrees celsius and all it can easily like you know convert into its gaseous state so if i am using hno3 over here or hcl over here for the preparation laboratory preparation of any gas what happens is that that particular acid will go and mix with the product which is formed which actually defeats the purpose so you'll be getting a mixture of two gases instead of your product so to avoid that we use concentrated sulfuric acid and when you have been asked the reason why you are using concentrated sulfuric acid your reason should have this keyword which is concentrated sulfuric acid is a non volatile acid right so it is a non volatile acid and it will easily displace the more volatile nitric acid from its salt so the salt is kno3 or nno3 i told you how these salts are formed kno3 is formed by the reaction of koh that is potassium hydroxide which is a base and hno3 which is an acid so you know that so like salts are formed by the reaction between acids and bases okay so koh plus hno3 gives you kno3 similarly naoh plus hno3 gives you nano3 so when i am having those salts and i am reacting it with a non volatile acid that is concentrated sulfuric acid i'll be getting hno3 out of it because H2SO4 being non-volatile displaces the volatile acid out of the salt. Okay, so that's the reason why we are using conch H2SO4. So obviously the second question will be why HCl is not used. So the answer is like evident. That is because HCl is a volatile acid. Okay, so if HCl itself is volatile, it cannot displace another volatile acid. Why? Because if I am using conch HCl in this case and I am heating it with NaNO3 or KNO3, when I heat it. when i go above a particular temperature hcl itself will undergo like you know transformation from the liquid state to the gaseous state so obviously like you know displacing the volatile acid is out of question because it itself will go and mix with the acid which is formed over there okay so that's the reason why conch hcl is not used as a reactant in the laboratory preparation of nitric acid the third point is molar ratio of the salt and acid is taken as 1 is to 1 molar ratio is number of moles So if you look at the reaction, uh, the reaction, the reactants are like you know in one is to one ratio. That is NaNO3 or KNO3. One mole is reacting with one mole of concentrated sulfuric acid. The point why it is given over here is in the textbook it is given in detail. That is H2SO4. If you look at the acid, H2SO4 is a dibasic acid. Now you know what is basicity of an acid. Basicity is if I take an acid, how many hydrogen ions that acid can give us. that is if i am putting it in water or if i find like you know uh, doing any reaction with it so if i take hcl hcl has got one hydrogen so it is monobasic hno3 has got one hydrogen it is monobasic h2so4 has got two hydrogen making it a dibasic acid so even though it is a dibasic acid so the point is like matlab the quantity of hydrogen which is formed over here is more but then still why are we taking it like you know in one is to one ratio is because whenever we are doing any reaction with hso4 i had explained this in the class i believe if not pay attention uh, whenever we take any reaction of h2so4 h2so4 always undergoes dissociation in two steps it never dissociates itself into 2h plus and so4 at one point i will write it and show it over here that is if i am taking h2so4 okay so it directly does not give you like you know 2h plus ion that is uh, 2h plus and uh, so4 2 minus it never happens like this okay so it is always happening in two steps so what will happen in the first step is like uh, this h2so4 will break into h plus ion first and along with that you will be having hso4 sorry minus ion okay h plus and hso4 minus h plus is hydrogen ion obviously and hso4 minus you have studied is bisulfate valency test okay bisulfate ion this is the first step 
In the second step, this bisulfate ion undergoes dissociation. So this bisulfate ion dissociates like this, and then this becomes another H plus, and this becomes SO4 two minus. Okay, this is how dissociation of sulfuric acid takes place. So it does not become two H plus at one go. It first becomes one H plus ion, and then this HSO4 ion, uh, HSO4 two uh, like minus ion undergoes dissociation to give you another H plus ion and SO4 two minus. That's the reason why we take it in the ratio one is one because even though it is having two hydrogen, it does not give you two hydrogen at once. So it is giving you only one hydrogen. So the molar ratio one is to one is perfect. Okay. I hope that was clear. Then we have uh, an all glass apparatus is used. This will be a very important question from nitric acid because it's asked only in this case. Okay, never in case of HCl or HSO4 or any other reaction because uh, HSO4 does not have a laboratory preparation by the way. Okay, so this question is very important because nitric acid vapors, unlike hydrogen chloride, they are highly corrosive. Okay. So which means that it does not even have to be in the liquid state to be corrosive. Even in the vapor state, it is a corrosive acid. So if I am using any substance which is made up of rubber or cork or etc., it will like you know go and like you know uh, attack that particular thing and it will damage the rubber or cork which is used. So that's why I was explaining in that laboratory setup which I had shown. Everything should be in the uh, like you know the material which is used should be made up of glass. And not any other material because anything apart from glass is used over there. It will attack those particular things. And the important or the key word in this answer that is why an all glass apparatus is used. This will be the give this in question which will be asked. The key word for this answer is vapors of nitric acid. You people tend to write uh, that nitric acid is highly corrosive. That is why we don't like you know uh, we use an all glass apparatus, which is the wrong answer. Because it is vapors of nitric acid which is formed over there. So if you don't mention the term vapors, you will be getting zero marks in the board exam. So you have to make sure that the answer has the keyword that is vapors of nitric acid uh, are highly corrosive, and that is the reason why it may attack uh, rubber, cork, etc. And that's why we have to use a all glass apparatus. Okay, very important question from this part of the chapter. Okay, just one second. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, the reasons for that temperature thing I'll be explaining, Swara. And uh, uh, yes, Vaishnavi will be not be using cork or rubber in this case. Okay. So I just explained that markings. I'll repeat it before we, uh, like you know, before we are done with this class today, right? Okay. So that was uh, point number four. Point number five. Coming to temperature. Now, the temperature used around in this particular reaction is 200 degrees Celsius, exactly same like HCl. And again, same thing, temperature about 200 degrees Celsius are not used, same like HCl. But reasons will differ over here. The only uh, reason which is uh, common here is point number one and point number three. Okay, so there also you had got three points. Here also we have got three points. Now, point number one was same for HCl also, that is glass apparatus may break. And point number three was also there. That is Na2SO4 or K2SO4 forms a thick crust, sticks to the glass and is difficult to remove. These two points are same. So if you study that, you don't have to study these points again. The second point differs that is further decomposition of nitric acid takes place in this. Okay, this is the reason. This is one uh, specific reason which you will see for nitric acid. That is nitric acid will undergo decomposition to give you three products. That is nitrogen dioxide, oxygen and water. So to prevent that from happening, we do not heat it above 200 degrees Celsius. The third reason which we studied in HCl was wastage of fuel. Please don't write that over here because we have got another point. So you don't have to write you know, those points over here. You can write these three points. Two points are obviously like copy paste from HCl. Third point is further decomposition of HNO3. HNO3 undergoes decompos decomposition to give you nitrogen dioxide gas, oxygen gas and water vapor. Okay, so that's the reason why we don't Heat it above 200 degrees Celsius. Okay, so all three reasons, uh, all three reasons should be written when this question is asked. Even if you're writing in your notebook or in your exam, make a habit of writing the three points. Doesn't take much time. Okay, collection of nitric acid. So this is uh, like very different from whatever we had done for HCl and NS3. If you remember, for HCl and NS3, we had uh, to like you know collect it uh, over water or like you know you had to like uh, make it undergo liquefaction. Here we are doing just normal condensation process. We are just like, you know, opening a 
like uh, cooled water uh, in taken in a trough or like you know cold water coming through a tap and we are directly condensing the HNO3 vapors in the receiver flask okay unlike passing through any drying agent or then like you know collecting in a gas jar and then like dissolving it in water and you know, nothing like that okay very simple process it is directly going into a round bottom flask which we call as a receiving flask and we are directly condensing the vapors of HNO3 into liquid HNO3 that is how HNO3 is collected over here now identification of HNO3 gas there are two tests to identify this the first test is by taking uh, copper turnings okay so copper turnings are nothing but very small pieces of copper you must have seen in the lab if you have not seen when you go for your practicals after the school reopens you will see that so copper turnings are very small chips of copper uh, when we take this gas okay and uh, we react it with copper turnings obviously you cannot pass gas over copper turnings so what we do is we take the gas and we condense it we take it in the liquid form we treat it with copper turnings you can see reddish brown fumes of no2 is evolved okay that is because hno3 dissociates and gives you nitrogen dioxide gas so that's the reason right that is the first test okay that is evolution of reddish brown fumes of no2 is the first test the second test is by passing this gas through this is a very simple one because you can relate it to the uh, uh, this brown ring test okay brown ring test is very important so you can relate it to a brown ring test because this is like you know a half of what we are doing there so what we do is we pass this gas of hno3 through acidified feso4 solution now what is acidified feso4 solution we take feso4 solution and we acidify it by adding one or two drops of an acid it can be dilute hcl okay or dilute h2so4 or anything okay we can take dilute h2so4 because the ions are the same here so we can add one or two drops of acid so it makes the solution acidic that is acidified feso4 solution when we pass this nitric acid vapors into acidified feso4 solution it will turn the solution brownish in color feso4 has got its like peculiar like greenish shade when we pass this thing uh, that is your uh, HNO3, it will turn it into a brownish shade. So that is another test of identification of nitric acid. Okay, so nitric acid gas. You can also use the same thing for nitric acid also, not in the gaseous form, in the liquid form also. This is the test which can be used. Okay, so I will show you the brown ring test that would be like, you know, helping you to understand what actually happens over there. So just hold on, I'll show you the brown ring test.